only hero here that I'm actually interested in seeing. I'm really wondering how people's gonna how people are gonna build her. <laughs> okay. Well, um, hum, hmm. Hmm. As I oh. said, I really wonder oh. how people were gonna build her. Um, <laughs> hmm, hmm, wow. yeah. Okay, to be fair, she does get she does get the uh the guaranteed follow up from her, I know, her weapon, well, right? But you don't then you don't so, need brush assault. Okay, a brush assault doesn't make sense, but uh yeah. Unless you're fighting something with more than 46 res, I think it's I that's, think it's how her weapon works. I don't remember. That's that okay, here's the thing. If you fight something with more than 46 res, your chaos name should be triggering on their res therefore. Okay, yeah. But uh <laughs> Oh no, this I don't know. Funny. <laughs> I think Fury Desperation is very creative. Yes. I think mm -hmm. it uh it fits this really well. Yes, it actually does. We're not even kidding here, guys. Unless one of you guys are kidding. Well, I mean, it, it looks funny, but it does work. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I think Fury Desperation works so well, and we I didn't see this guy ahead of time, so I'm literally just um this is coming off of what I just saw now. The reason why I think it works so well is because once Chaos Manifest does trigger, we, in other words, you make a guaranteed follow-up attack, it reaches the criteria for Desperation to trigger as well. So basically, Desperation all it cares for is just to see if you can double or not, and if you can double, it'll go through one and two hits um, consecutively. But Chaos Manifest basically gives you that criteria. You can reach that criteria through speed or through a skill ability. So Chaos Manifest does give you that. So as soon as you get the Chaos name to trigger on somebody, when they have a debuff and then chaos manifest therefore comes into combat you get that extra six attack and guaranteed follow-up attack so you reach 56 attack and with the desperation you attack one and two so you don't even get get, get hit so that's actually a really good build for you nay um yeah, just change out your seal for a brazen or something right that's what i would say too because her hp is so low you can get into brazen relatively easily um and you can get into desperation from just one. you need two attacks well, I mean, you're also probably going to get hit, too, so... You have to pick your first battle. Okay. But I wanted to talk about this, about Yune, and I didn't I didn't want to shit on Yune, but a lot of people interpret it as this, I said Yune is a bad hero. I said Yune is a bad mythic hero. Is really what I meant. And I'm pretty sure I'd said that many, 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 many times, <laughs> um, for that matter. Okay, but... The reason... The, Yune's biggest handicap is... As a mythic hero is because light and dark seasons are on the same season so the issue is therefore if you fight another team and she, she was meant to be using your defensive teams on the light and dark seasons so she's going up against airs and the problem going up against airs is simply the fact that air specifically as her blessing adds res adds hp five extra res is a ton of extra res and considering the fact that most people would have a offensive fortress advantage, you add another four res on that. So that at minimum, I would say generally at minimum, nine extra res. This is before we even talk about their heroes buffing them up with more res. That's before we're even talking about their versas or whatever hero debuffing your team. So that's already problematic. And then a lot of people do run a second air. So they could have like 14 extra res. Sorry, 13 extra res. And then... And then you get debuffed. And then and then you find your chaos name not triggering at all. In which case your chaos manifest doesn't trigger. And if you don't do any of that stuff, Yune is actually not very good. And that's the problem. If she works, if if these weapon skills work, C skill works, weapon skill works, she's pretty good. If it doesn't work, she's pretty mediocre. Which is unfortunately what her stat spread uh, ended up being. I mean High attack, um, pretty okay attack. High res is is a not a bad place to go from. But then that makes her very similar to characters like Bridal Sonicky, which is very similar as well. And Bridal Sonicky, I think, has a better role to play without in general because she doesn't have to rely on her um skills to trigger to be good. But. Her skills would trigger anyways. Because Nimble Frost Flower is so easy. Attack plus 3 and during combat. Attack speed by number of allies within 2 spaces. 2 spaces. X2. And adds up to 6. So she can really easily reach 59 attack. 38 speed. So she is not as reliant. She does have slightly less res. Um, but that's, that's okay. 
And my IVs are terrible. My HP plus defense. Oh, God. Anyways, um, I don't know, man. I think, I think Yune, if she was not a mythic hero and just a normal hero, she'd be completely fine. But as a mythic hero, you should really be valuing her as a mythic hero. And as a mythic hero, she's in the worst possible position. She should have really been Astra, and she should have been used offensively, in my opinion. Defensively, not as much value. She would be fine for the bonus week, at least. I agree, but that's just for the bonus week. Yeah, I wouldn't pull units just to use them for bonus. Mm -hmm. Though saying that, next bonus week is complete trash. You mean for uh, AR? We got Oliver. Okay, well, you, well. Get, you get Oliver, whatever. Also, and the other argument against um, Yune is this. What if you just win your defensive battles? Then she was pointless. Then she's pointless, right. So, I'm in AR tier 21, 22. Um, I have a pretty good defensive team, I would say. Though, of course, on YouTube, everyone wants to say it's bad. And then, whatever. Like, I, okay, I'm not going into this again. My entire point is... There's no point in ether uh, loss reduction if you just straight up don't lose. I know that it kind of sounds stupid for some people because, like you know, yeah. just just win, right? Just win. But you can't you can make a defensive team that has a very consistent win. Right, and in my case, I'm running Duma. And here's the thing: a lot of people are like, Duma's stupid. Duma does even less than Yune. I basically disagree. For me, it, it for me, especially me. I hope people understood what I just said there, especially just for me. I can't run Yune, right? If I want to run Yune, I can't run LA Azura because I would be giving up the tactic skills because I will also run Aversa. Therefore, it would be three flyers. If you run three flyers, you're giving up the tactic skills on the flyers. It just makes more sense for me to run two flyers, which in my case, I always think everyone should run LA Azura. That creates the most diverse situations um, possible because... She can teleport to dance, um, teleport to use gray waves, and gray waves gives them extra range. And then with the rally speed, defense plus, and the combinations that creates, that's pretty significant. So I, I definitely think you should run LA Azura. And I think Aversa is basically a, a non-argument as well. I think everyone should run Aversa. If you just debuff the enemy team, you mess up so many things for them. So, and because they generally have a higher level fortress, like for me, I love for four fortress versus level three defensively. You need something to, like, balance things out. And a Versus Knight does that relatively easily. So, for in my case, I really think because you're going to run these two heroes anyways, you find yourself in a problematic situation. And because you're running a Ver Azura, you lose a slot to run the Dark Blessing on. And for me, my entire team, I only found one slot to run the Anima Blessing on. And now it's for Ophelia, and that's it. That was it. Everybody else... I use a Versa in my offensive team, so she has to be light blessed. My Nino's in my um, arena team, and for water seasons, I go for tier 21 and stay in there. So I, I keep her as a water blessed, unless I'm unless I'm crazy enough to switch it like every other week. But I don't think that's worth it. So, so for me personally, I can't even see the value in it. And even if you figure out a team to use Yune in, uh, and again, don't get me wrong, she's a great hero. Oh, it's reset. Okay, well, she didn't even notice. We're on. We're on a rant right now. Okay, but even First if you... The force coming, guys, I swear. Yeah. Here's the problem with Yune. 18 defense. 38 HP. I wonder who kills Yune. I wonder who kills Yune in the same season as Yune. It's air. Air kills her. It's, it's so ridiculous, guys. That one had Fury. Most of them are not going to have Fury. But you should run Fury. I, I really think Fury's good. Uh, you need every extra point of defensive stats. And I know someone's going to say, well, she's going to be a bonus hero. Well, the point is, after she's not a bonus hero, what happens? Because against you Air... You just die. You just die. That's the thing. Against Air, you're in so much trouble. Um, Where is she? Oh, she's right up here. Against Air, that's 54. And Lithia Bird, that's added another 4. So you reach 54 attack. 54 attack versus... And that's a non-merge air versus with no 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 flowers. So 54. 18 plus 38 is 56. Yeah, that's 56. That's already super close. And that's because of Fury. If you didn't run Fury, 
Yune gets one shotted. Maybe you trigger Chaos Named on her, but um, I'm, I wouldn't be that wouldn't be guaranteed because again, you're looking at a one to one, and when you're going up against other people's Yunes, it's controlled by some AI, right? Whereas your your heir or what whatever whatever have you will be in a team meant to help her out there. So in my case, I would have like okay, well this is the wrong build, but I would have like Hone Flyers, and then that adds an extra six attack, six speed, and then she just one shots her. Or I would be having like the four or five flyers that I usually have on Versa, and then she would have too much res to get to deal with it in the first place. So keep in mind, like air is a bonus hero right now, so she reaches 38, 38 res. But if she even 38 res, and then you give her the four or five flyers, she reaches 44. In that case, it doesn't work. Well, I guess once I guess the bonus hero things would mess things up. But what I'm saying is, generally everyone has a counter for Yune. And that would just be air. Air's high attack, high res. And what kills Yune is high res heroes with high attack. Because she has low defense. Anyways, um, I think she's a great hero in every other mode. But when you're a mythic hero, you should be valued as a mythic hero in ether raids. And I think in ether raids, she doesn't really have a spot. But for everything else, I think she's a top green mage. Because, whenever, because in everything else, you don't have to worry about people having like... Um, absurdly higher stats in which case chaos manifest and chaos names is basically guaranteed it's just an ether raids that becomes a problem yeah i do hope that the the mythic heroes going forward are better designed because i know we we did have some pretty weirdly designed legendary heroes when they first came out too yeah so. like um lynn mm -hmm. but uh yeah lynn ryoma yeah. ryoma especially with the fact that bushido was his b skill but then Bushido's best use with Fire Sweep Weapon, so you kind of have to get rid of Raijinto. So this is another one of those heroes I think Aya just didn't think enough about. But I think for every other mode, she'll be fine in just for the fact of Ether Raids. If they just switched her to... I think if she was Astra, she would be so much better. I, I don't think you should be using Yune defensively, even though she could ploy. Um, one guy on YouTube said to me she can replace Aversa. And I don't know what to say to that guy, so I didn't respond. Uh, it's not the same. Yeah, thing. He might he might mean by the sabotage res, but <laughs> Aversa still has more potential with that because she both debuffs by three and panics. Yes. So it would still she could still be better if they have a res buff on. Chaos named only triggers and um, goes for the top stat that you have. So if it's a what if your attack after you reduce fifteen from it is your stat there. And whatever your highest is there, it takes away 5 points from that. That isn't a panic ploy. That's just a ploy. And that might not matter. For example, if Yune fights against... For example, if Yune fights against... Hmm, somebody with really, really high speed. Well, you've taken away 5 speed. It doesn't matter. You're going to double anyways. And they're probably going to double you regardless. Because so the speed aspect doesn't matter if it's a hero of high high physical attack i hope it gives you enough reduction that you survive getting hit back one time of course that's why i think fury desperation works out so well with chaos manifest because you don't have to worry about it um and uh, if it's if it's res um i think chances are that's not so valuable either because you're going to flatten them anyways if it's defense that literally has no impact on you so taking away five stats as good as it sounds is mostly just to help your Chaos Manifest trigger, because in a lot of cases, she doesn't actually take advantage of it. Now, the rest of your team could take advantage of it, though. But it's it's very specific, because it has... And the scenarios are, like, endless, because it's the high stat. There was one person who mentioned going sturdy impact on Yune, and I don't see it at all. The, the reason you okay, might... Go... I can see why, yeah. because her, her weapon doesn't... Uh, it doesn't protect against enemies doubling. Mm-hmm. Unlike uh, Freed's weapon, so and I her. think it can be very powerful. Yes, but it's still very expensive for one. Yes, and uh, I don't know. It, it's a per from a person to person thing. You know, I hate that argument when people just mention like, "Why don't you just give this hero this premium skill? It solves everything." Well, is Tip aren't even available right now? No, for starters, and it's in. Can you really make that decision? But the reason I understand it, because you want Yune to be able to survive going up against air, 
You add 10 defense to her, and she's going to survive against air. She's going to win the fight. But that's sturdy impact, and sturdy impact is expensive. So, yeah, I mean, she's a good hero, and there's no arguing against that. But for the reasons of Aether Raids and for what she was designed, designed to do in Aether Raids, she basically fails, and she falls so flat there. Um, if you're getting her, it better be for every other mode than Aether Raids. I can't suggest this girl at all. For most people who already have the Ward Flyer Emblem Balls that people would argue Yune is so good in, most people run those balls of Flyers in both offense and defense, therefore they're already light blessed. So do you really want to switch up the dynamic of the entire team or make a second Flyer Emblem Ball? Like that's all my arguments for it, it's just like, there's so many things hampering her from reaching her potential. She should have been on the other side of the seasons with like a Duma or something, with Duma as like Anima or something. But really, I think she should have been Astra and been an offensive hero.